previous lecture I gave you a philosophy of uh, the genesis of the subject and uh, in today's lecture I will go into more into details of uh, what environmental geotechnics is all about. So, the first question is uh, what is the genesis again? That was more of a philosophical discussion which we had in the previous lecture and today coming to the point uh, what forces us to talk about environmental geotechnics. In short, what is the genesis of this uh, philosophy? How would you describe this? Suppose if I ask you a question uh, based on the discussion which I had with you in the previous lecture. So, based on the yesterday's discussion, the question is uh, what is the cause of genesis of this subject or philosophy? So, what comes to your mind? How would you sum it up? what we discussed in the previous lecture. What is the prime reason for environmental ge geotechnics to originate? Anybody? There are various impacts uh, due to the manipulations we do to soil and due to other constructions which uh, like where, where are they consider soil. So, it is unfair to uh, not consider them. Okay, very good. Any other attempt? Meet. Yeah. Sir, last lecture you talked about the effects that human kind, the mankind's activity has had on the globe. So you talked that uh, naturally, uh, whatever is existing and whatever is being manipulated. So due to uh, those effects, there is a need for this topic to happen. Okay, good. Aditya. Arushi, yes, please. Each and every activity that uh, we do it needs a venue, a place, and whenever we need a place, we need to construct something on the ground. And uh, whenever we construct something on the ground, be it good, good for the environment, be it bad for the environment, be it good for the soil or bad for the soil, it needs it needs to be studied thoroughly to understand the uh, understand the consequences. And I believe that's why environmental so, just a small amendment to what you said, you said on the soil. I think if you remember in the previous lecture, I emphasized about three things. It could be on, it could be in and it could be with. So, most of the western countries, particularly if you visit, you will find that the entire infrastructure is underground. Now, this concept is coming in our country also. We are talking about you know underground infrastructure development, underground space utilization. It is a very big topic. You type it on Google and you will not find many experts in the country you know who are working in this area, underground space utilization. Now, underground space utilization could be with several intentions. You know intentions could be different. I want to install my facilities which are very precious to me. Let us say hydrocarbons. I hope you understand. If I stack hydrocarbons on the surface, what is going to happen? In this age of terrorism, you never know me or you or anyone else might like to take a chance, clear? So, the biggest question is how to utilize underground space. So, when you say on, this is one third of the total gamut of the activities. Similarly, I like to house let us say some very important personalities like Saddam Hussein did what he did underground space utilization for creation of the entire kingdom. I would like to house let us say top 200 scientists of the country, they remain unaffected with anything in the world, fine. Underground infrastructure for nuclear waste disposal. The biggest question is India wants to become atomic major. I think we were discussing a lot in the previous lecture. Now, the question is when you fire your furnaces, even in the households, you know, we call them angiti. Let us say a kitchen or let us say small chula. So, you are using some fuel and when you burn fuel, what happens? 
there is some ash, there is some byproduct which is coming out apart from fumes which are going in the environment. So, the question is where are you going to dump the waste which is generating because of incineration of wood, coal, fine. Now, suppose if I am trying to create energy out of nuclear material, isotopes, nucleides and if I incinerate them in a furnace which is nothing but an atomic reactor. So, common sense says that I am going to produce some byproducts, ashes, where should I dispose them. This is the third example of, I think I gave you three examples, infrastructure development for different kinds, petroleum, disposal of the waste and so on. I do not know whether you are aware or not, geothermal energy is becoming a very integral part of geotechnical engineering because what is the temperature in the western world right now? You are enjoying in half shirts over here, 25 degree, beautiful temperature. You go to the western world, what is the temperature there? minus 20, minus 30, what is the energy requirement? Imagine, tremendous, you are getting the point. So, the biggest issue is how to create energy, how to restore energy, how to store energy. Now, we are going to store energy, geothermal, underground, clear? So, these are few examples, you know I keep citing these examples because I want to give you a lot of information in one go. It may look to be you know quite emphatic. Try to google out these things, you know why? My intention is that all of you should pick up these keywords. How many of you want to become entrepreneurs? Only one on this side, you are not decided yet, you want to become an entrepreneur, why? Not your cup of tea, and then you are the best entrepreneur actually. Anyone else? See the type of words which I use here, believe me or not, these are going to be the best possible entrepreneurship schemes. And again remember, we do not have many experts in the country who can guide us. So, when I speak to you, please remember I am not preaching only, I am just trying to tell you that look, these are the spaces which are, there is a void, there is a vacant space and where we need professionals who can help the society and who can help the nation. So, all these things which we have talked about, you know, underground space utilization and all, become an expert and help the nation in growing. We do not have anybody to help us, believe me. So, these all areas are grey areas. There are hardly very few people and those who are there, they are not going to live long. So, this information has to be transmitted and you have to create next generation of the guys. Well, any, any other idea which comes to your mind about genesis of this subject? These two have very beautifully summarized everything. Anything else which comes to your mind? Good, yes. Human activities. Human activities, yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yes. Correct. Correct. So, basically, we need to create a sustainable life, use 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 of sustainable resources. Correct. Good. My name is Ashutosh. Ashutosh, yes. For this topic, I would have like in order to sustainably optimize the resources that the engineers do. So, technologists do. Sorry. Technologist. Yes, let us not divide, you know, like the way politically world has been divided, it has no meaning. Yes. So, sustainably optimize the activities that technologists do in hmm. order to make a better future. Good. So, in today's discussion, I am going to give you some other ideas, fine. So, in my opinion, the genesis of environmental geotechnics is number one population explosion. In what way? Population explosion is a Demographic study. How come civil engineers are associated with this? Very nice. Yes, Piyush, yes. Very good. So, infrastructure overall, clear. So, you are designing infrastructure and you are realizing the infrastructure is becoming less, whatever you do.
fine. So, you create express highways, the speed of the cars remain still 20 km per hour, though you are designing them in factory for 300 km per hour, fine. You have beautiful aircrafts, but they cannot land because airport is congested. So, population explosion is the main cause of everything. This is where civil engineering, geotechnical engineering is directly getting linked with demographic issues. There was a time when civil engineers were totally away, they used to say no, 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 this is not our issue, this is a social problem. But civil engineering cannot be done unless you consider societal issues. Why? Just now I was given an example, I want to run more and more nuclear power plants. And then I told you that whatever is going to come out of the furnaces or the atomic reactors, I have to go, I have to dump it somewhere. Now, who is going to allow me to dump this atomic waste in his or her courtyard? You know, we are so selfish. You are getting the point. So, if government says, vacate this land and I want to develop a disposal facility over here, how many will come forward? It is not China. Believe me, government of India has spent I do not know how many thousands of crores after detailed studies of the locations and ultimately people never cooperated. You know why we are behind, why we are lagging behind by 50 years? It is because of our own foolishness. You understand this point? There is a lot of technology involved in this. They never had faith in our own scientists. Let us see, we are going to handle this waste in the most proper manner and nothing is going to happen to you. Be rest assured. And this is where geotechnics is involved into it. Are you getting this point? So, population explosion requires more energy, more space to live, more space to expand. I think in first lecture I gave you an example. In order to cater my population, what nations are doing? They are expanding themselves every day. Singapore. Hong Kong, Switzerland, you will find so many places, you know, what do they do? They create land, land creation, Dubai, Middle East, now China, now India. How many projects are going on in India? Are you aware, are you aware of it? Look at this picture. Okay, sometime you please check it, you know, how even the Indian continent and the boundaries are changing. Mega projects related to port and port expansions are being taken up in the country. 250 acres, you know, 1000 of acres is now being reclaimed from the sea. So, it is a very good example of what population explosion is doing. I want to create airports in the sea now because there is no land in the cities. You agree? Suppose if I ask you, you are the consultant to the T2, our international airport. British Airways does not land there. Why? Simple question. Who is responsible? There is no politics involved in this. You know, it is our stupidity that we never bothered about larger planes to land on such a small platform or on the airport. Clear? What we have been doing? 30 percent of the airport area is enclosed by the slums. Clear? And no government can remove it. Well, so population explosion is forcing you now to adopt different means. Let us go to no man's land, create land there and create an airport there. So now we are going to have concept of satellite airports in the country, the way we have in Japan, Korea, Hong Kong, everywhere, Singapore. They are all floating islands, they are all floating airports. More and more industries are required to feed you, is it not? So more population. More industries are required, agriculture industries are required, automobile industries are required, infrastructure industries are required, pharmaceutical industries are required. So, the more population, the more problems, the more chaos. So, why environmental geotechnics is now getting evolved? Because we are realizing that this is becoming a dynamic phenomena. Everything changes overnight, Bombay changes overnight. Go to the countries. Where you know big cities change overnight, they do not have time to stop for anybody. You know the infrastructure changes completely. I do not know how many of you are really aware or not, 
Paris is going to lay at least seven to eight, you know, metro network underground, seventh floor, sixth floor, fifth floor. Those of you, whenever you get a chance, please go and visit their railway network system. So the entire city is going to be underground. Why can't we do this thing in Rajasthan, where people are getting fried at a 52, 55 degree temperature during summers? See, these are the questions. So, how are you going to place your populations is a big question. Now, when you start thinking about this and when you realize the pain of the fellow countrymen, then ideas come. What should I do? I should create some place in Himalayas also. Badrinath, a lot of people go there and every day, every year they die because of landslides. It is a practical problem. You have been to Badrinath ever? I was, I went there and I am lucky that I am in front of you. Believe me, the car which was going in front of me, there was a boulder of 5 ton which just dropped on it. See, this is a life and this is the certainty of the life. That must be a reason when people used to go to Badrinath, Kedarnath 50 years back, when they used to come back, people used to touch their feet. They are just like gods because they came back here. Believe me, this is a fact. The conditions are so difficult, you can't believe and this is where people are living. Hundreds of vehicles go and get parked over there. Clear? Whether it is safe or not, nobody knows. Much population, more ideas to enjoy life, picnic, there's that. I think I have given you some idea about food, shelter, automobiles, what do you call it? Anything which comes to your mind, which money can buy. So, more population, more issues, you have to cater to them. This is one reason. The second reason is too much of industrialization as I said. The more and more industries you are trying to set, the more and more problems are going to increase. Every industry has two traits. It has commercial value, it has social value. And what is the negative side? Every industry has its own impact. Some of you must have studied environmental engineering courses, we call it as EIA, Environmental Impact Analysis of any institution which gets created. So, you said you want to become an industrialist, suppose you want to install industry of let us say X, what is that you are going to do? What will be your first step? Sorry? Ideation, that means you are going to pen down or jot down some concepts. You are, this is what is known as DPR, detailed project report. So, the first thing you are going to do is along with your concept, you are going to speak out what you are going to do, what your activities would be. The last question would be very good, all your activities are very well taken. What will be the impact of these activities on the environment? Clear? Now, this is where the entire file gets stuck up at one place. Why? Because DPRs are not clearly defined. So, the more and more industrialization is happening, the more and more pollutants are being discharged in the environment. Now, when we talk about environment as, as she rightly said, is the natural environment which was given by nature, gods to us and what we have created today. All sorts of environmental components have been camouflaged clear, abused, soil, water, rocks, everything because we are discharging things there. So, this is the genesis of the more and more industrialization occurs, the more and more problems start. Now, what should we do as a developing nation, should we stop industrialization? Then what should we do? We should become like Beijing. What is the problem with Beijing? It was in news. What about Delhi? We are also very close to Beijing by the way. Nobody can beat us. Pollution. In terms of industrialization, Chinese is the most uh, environmentally friendly, uh, China is the most environment friendly country and USA is the worst country and it could because they do not even consider global warming as Donald Trump has mm. mentioned many times. So, I think that China but my dear, if you go to any Chinese town, particularly the one which is most industrialized, you will find it is highly polluted. Particularly Beijing is a good example of this place. I do not know whether you have heard or not, 
and Delhi is fast approaching that standard it is another classic example. So, the problem is that you know the more and more industrialization is taking place what we should do what type of uh, strategy we should be adopting as a nation. See most of the time we abuse our politicians, politicians are not doing anything you know politicians abuse whom? Us, why? We are the culprit when they ask me a question I do not have any answer. They say take up this project and give us a report I said sorry I cannot do it because I do not have a student, I do not have manpower, I do not have hands who is going to do this I am too old now for this. You see this has become a chicken egg story. So, very soon you will realize that there is a big question mark whether India should become a industrialized nation or not. If you do not become industrialized nation what are the what are the cons? Population, no employment, no productivity, what about GDP? Everybody is pre watching TV, IPL and cricket matches, no work. So, everything is related to something. Now, why I give more emphasis on all these things as a technologist you should understand the importance of your subject and how it is directly related with the growth of the nation. If government of India has spent X amount in rearing you up as a technologist whether we are getting even some fraction of this money back or not is a big question mark remember. I hope you understood what industrialization does uncontrolled mushrooming of industries, Wapi area, Ankleshwar area, Baroda you pass through this line you know any day in the morning you must have noticed you cannot breathe even. Just travel nowadays is the right time to travel you know from IIT take a taxi go towards CST early morning through express highway and then take a taxi and go towards Ahmedabad. So, by the time you reach Wapi, Ankleshwar, all these areas you realize what I am saying. Similarly, here when you cross this Mankhod area, Shedanagar crossing, what is happening there? All the waste which is lying in the landfill, NASA had issued a picture during this 2016 March, there was a landfill fire, you must have come across it, fine. All these fumes come, cold weather all this tax down you cannot breathe. This is the one of the issues associated with the industrialization. I do not know what is the answer, you have to optimize things. Third thing is I hope you will agree, do not bother approach. What is do not bother approach and why it is linked with environmental geotechnics? So basically sometimes we feel like we see a problem, but when we feel it is not our field. Yes, we ignore, we ignore it. it, we ignore it. So, what is going to happen because of this ignoring something ignoring facts and it may become a volcanic situation we are just sitting on volcanoes. If your ppm count is 300 plus and you are still sleeping comfortably in your rooms you should wake up very soon because one day this is going to choke you. So, I do not know how many of you can really sleep at night. This is what education does, it makes you more fearsome, makes you dull because you understand what is happening. Ignorance is the bliss, you do not bother what is happening, what is PPM 332 I do not know, it is something which is getting printed in the newspaper that is it, they do not even bother. So, do not bother approach is like this, <coughs> many of us go to the picnic, we carry a lot of things with us, we enjoy whole day, what do we do? dump everything there. So, many expeditions go to Antarctica, Himalayas, what do they do? Are you aware of the recent embargo which has been put on these expeditions? All these guys who are going up to the Mount Everest, when they come down they have to bring along with them all unused packets number one, used packets number two and there will be inventory, you cannot throw it there. What this guy did? They created a landfill at the highest location in the world that is mountain. Are you realizing this? Do not bother sluggish approach, I do not care, my job is done, 
tent, shoes, dress, this, that, food items, everything I will throw. It is someone else's job to take care of it. So, Mount Everest became a landfill. You know, same with your amusement. You go there, you enjoy whole day, dump everything, I do not bother. Similarly, this is everywhere. At the upscale levels also, you will come to know about several examples which I am going to talk about. Ignorance. Many are not educated. They do not know what they are doing. They are burning rubber tires in Holi festival. 2016 March, the same thing happened. I live on the 15th floor and I could see at the night time, you know, there was a dense fog layer of smoke and I was just wondering when it is going to settle down further and whether I will be able to breathe or not. Literally, I was seeing this whole you know cloud formation and then literally precipitating it slowly and slowly and slowly and I was just thinking of flooding away along with my family. But then the question is where I am going to flood away? Is there a place? So, this is a tussle which goes on in the minds of the people you know and seeing at the real life situations. I hope you will agree with this Diwali day. All of you must have been here I am sure fourth year and third year guys. Did you notice this or not? It was difficult to breathe. Look at the cost we are paying as a nation, capital nation NCR for celebrating a Diwali festival. The fog could not disappear even after fourth month of the festival getting over. All flights are getting derouted, changed, cancelled. It is all man-made. You agree? You take off from Delhi. 7 minutes flight, you see beautiful clean sky, there is no pollution, nothing. It is all local phenomena which is hovering around the entire city. Ignorance is also a part of this, our educate, people are not educated. Now, the most important part of the thing is human greed. I do not know whether you have given a serious thought to this or not. The subject got created because of human greed. These were all minor issues. What is your interpretation about human greed? Harish, yes, please. No, now we are talking about human greed. Greed is in red world. Yes, please. Okay. I believe that the human greed comes from short sightedness, realizing the maximum possible output with minimum cost, but they are being very short sighted and not seeing the repercussions of the greater part of the people. And that is why they would be, have been ignoring sustainability and presently the assessment is that they are rising the um, awareness. So, people are working towards it, but earlier I believe this has been the reason for short sightedness has, has caused. Okay. Our question why these wars took place, they were natural phenomena or they were created? Why they were created? Greed. Greed. Is it not? Why would you like to go and bomb somebody? Why? You want to take control over them, you want to show them, you know, they are, you are much more muscular than what they are. Yes, powerful, greed, power, acquiring everything. Why these wars were created, Iran, Iraq? What happened, Middle East? What nonsense is going on? Why? Yes, yes, that is one. So, what Iraqis did? When they were flooding away from the battlefield, what did they do? Very nice. Why? They said, you do not want to lose anything. If it is not mine, it cannot be yours even. Look at the philosophy of the guys, you know. <laughs> you agree? So, greed is something, excess of mining, excessive intake of water. You know, the villages do not have water to drink for people and then you are establishing a cold drink manufacturing unit there. 
because you are very powerful. So what do you do? You go and suck deep up to 300 meters and you take out all the ground water and villagers do not get even a drop of water to drink. What is this? As you rightly said, in order to flourish my business, I am even snatching fresh air and fresh water from you. Beautiful example of greed. Wars, petroleum products, minerals, you know, lands, different stakes you can talk about, even the fresh water, hydrocarbons. So, human mind can act both ways. It could be a devil's activity advocate also. So, if my mind goes and say, I will acquire everything and tomorrow I want to bring, become a king of this place, what I will do? I will do directional drilling. You are sitting in your home and I will do deep drilling sitting in my home. You cannot realize and I will suck out all your resources. Directional drilling was evolved because of this, you know this. Now, nowadays nobody do, does vertical drilling. So, sitting in India, I can go up to the territory of Pakistan. I can suck out all hydrocarbons and nobody can realize what is happening. This is the art of drilling. Human greed, good example, how technology can be utilized in the worst manner. You are getting the point. And then there are big, big technologies which have been developed based on this directional drilling. Check it on net and become an expert in this subject. Anybody is here from Durgapur area, CBM, coal bed methane? Anybody is here from, from uh, West Bengal? No? Have you ever seen these tripods installed somewhere very close to this running and field? You will find at several places there are small, small establishments and there will be tripods and then there will be a generator set and they will be doing something. Just try to go and see what they are doing. You know what they have done? They have drilled a hole and they have gone kilometers and kilometers in the literal direction to suck out what? It is not the oil, it is not the hydrocarbons which they get there. It is the coal bed methane which they are collecting from there, you know. So, they go deep directional 10 degree and from 10 degree they will go kilometers away and whatever the range of this suction which I can create, I can I can collect all the gases from the uh, coal seams, is this correct? He is a mining expert. So, and then you can collect all these gases and you can fill them in your bottles and you can market them. This is also an example. So, human greed could be of any type. I want to, I want to, you know, extract everything from the nature without realizing that if I am doing this activity, who is going to get affected? Fine. Did you get the point? There is a lot of geotechnics involved in this, as I said, how much I should mine out so that the structures above are not going to collapse. So, when you construct a metro, there is something known as overburden. That means, if this is the chute and this is the depth of embedment of the tunnel, I have to be very careful about this zone because all the buildings are situated over here. Now, if I start tunneling something, what is going to happen? Everything will start collapsing. Bangkok is a beautiful example, Thailand is a beautiful example, in India, Masuri is a beautiful example, where too much of mining of what? limestone in Masuri has started settlements of the entire formations. So, the more and more you dig out, the more and more you take out the uh, you know oil, resources, hydrocarbons, water even, this is what is known as subsidence. We gave you an example of this Venice also the other time. Very good, excellent. Yeah, because they keep on multiplying, you know, today 10, tomorrow 100, day after tomorrow 1000 and then next day it is 1 lakh. Exactly, very good. So, this is also one of the reasons, correct, multiplication factors. So, today I wanted to be a local agency, local industry and tomorrow definitely I want to become international. Clear? Exactly. I want to expand more and more. 
greed. But at the same time, you are helping also society. So all these issues which I am talking about, I am sure you must have realized that this is, you know, multivariate complex problem. You agree with this or not? If I say A1 into A2 into A3, A4, A5, A6 equal to 0 ultimately because everything becomes 0. Sigma x i equal to 0, you must be knowing this law. So what happens? You are doing something over here, extraordinary and then look at the effects. So all this gets summarized into greed, she is right. Anything else apart from this which comes to your mind? Very good. So, exactly, you know, that was the message which I am trying to give to all of you through this discussion on environmental geotechnics. Right now, I am just highlighting the issues, clear? And I think I have highlighted several issues. Now, the question is. I need intelligent guys who can tackle these situations and those who can convert waste into wealth. That is the need of the hour. Everybody understands that these are the issues. She rightly said, he rightly said, correct. What is the solution? One of the solutions is do not keep any manufacturing industry in your continent. Send them to India, third world country, let people suffer there. It is a business strategy. <laughs> you agree with this? The entire Gujarat is facing this problem. Why? Who asked you to start developing, you know, pharmaceutical plants at such a densely located place where nothing can be done now? Look at the people, what they breathe there. You are getting the point? So, it is just because to make a certain place, you know, flourishing monetarily. We have compromised with the health of the people. Is this part clear? So these questions are not going to have very simple answers. And that is why I think in my opinion, all these issues are going to be the issues of global importance. And that is why people are having conferences every year to discuss all these things. What should I do? Apart from this grid, you want to define Utkarsh, yes. Yes. Or maybe one or two would have been set up to take care of the local area. So this is where again the grid started. This guy set up an industry. Let me also, let me also, and let me also. So the place which could cater hardly for five, now there are fifty. Clear? Very good. Yeah. So what you have said is that all these issues could be interlinked. They are not separate. They are all interlinked processes. More population, more industrialization. More population, more industrialization. More people who are ignorance, having ignorance and do not bother approach, clear? And then followed by everybody is greedy. So, very interesting dynamics between all these traits. So, what we thought is, you know, this is how we should tackle the whole thing. So, I thought that is all philosophical, very philosophical. You know, we are trying to touch upon the issues which are not very quantifiable. Ignorance cannot be quantified, is it not? Is there any index to quantify the ignorance? Greed cannot be quantified. Population explosion can be quantified. I am sure there are mathematical models that you can say today population is this, yesterday population was this, day for yesterday population was this, curve goes like this. So, uh, the idea is how are you going to speculate all these things tomorrow? What is happening today? If I ask you, a, uh, if I ask you to develop a model, these models are always based on the philosophies. When you say y equal to mx plus c, it is a philosophy. You say everything is varying linearly. Whether in life things happen linearly or not is a different question, clear? And then I am trying to fit data 
and then I say R square equal to 0 0.99 and I am very happy. R square is 0.75, I am not so happy, I am sad because there are a lot of outliers, clear? So truly speaking, quantification of a model requires a philosophy and this concept of environmental geotechnics was a philosophy where we are dealing with underground environment, fine? You can say what happened to the other part of the environment. So very conveniently we have eliminated that. Why? I am not an expert who works in the field of air pollution. Air pollution itself is a very, very wide area, clear? So we have to be sure about myself being a geotechnologist, I would have preferred to work in a porous media and porous media is something which is below the horizon, clear? Semi-infinite soil mass which you might have studied in your Bosnian equation. There you assume semi-infinite soil mass. What is semi-infinite soil mass? What is infinite? The entire ball. I cut it here. This becomes semi-infinite, clear? Half of the sphere. This is where the issues which are being raised are talked about. So, in my opinion, this subject environmental geotechnics is a beautiful blend of geotechnical engineering and environmental engineering. Now this was my USP, unique selling point. Geotechnical engineering I used to profess and then one, one day I realized that let me have a tinge of environment also and then when I assimilated these two things, now I am realizing this is becoming a wonderful thing, very hot selling thing, you know this, extremely hot selling. Now this picture tells all the story and I would say this is the gist of the entire course or the discussion which we are going to have. What I am trying to depict here? What is happening here? Can you describe? And what is the role of technologist, geotechnologist, environmental scientist? Yes, please. You are right, you are right, correct. Okay, next person. Decipher as much as you can. Water table is also decreasing. Water table is also decreasing. Yes, why? Because of the water. Because of the population there. Yeah. They require ground water to drink. Yes. Very good. Contamination of water table. Yes. Very nice. Very good. Yes. Land? Land degradation. How do you say that? Okay. 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 Okay, okay, fine. Land is good. Beautiful. Excellent. She defined the everything, you know. Okay, go one stage ahead. Now, because you have given the correct answer, define what it is. What should be done? Uh, Arushi, I suppose. Yes, yes, please. Good. So, your point is that even if something is happening here, whether this is safe distance or not, is it not? Perfect. Apart from this, very good. Yes, 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 yes. It's a happy family, you know, looking in, living in a green, beautiful environment, beautiful greenery. Yes. Everything perfect. And one human activity. So, the moment you see that something is being dropped over here, red means this is hazardous. It's a, I'm sure you must have heard this name hazardous. Have you come across the term hazardous, toxic? 
What is the difference between the two? Vijay, yes. You are right. You are very close to the correct definition. Any other trial, yes? So, you have to understand this also because when you said that something is happening over here and the effects are being felt over here. Now, the next stage is whether this is toxic or whether it is hazardous. As you rightly said, one of you, I think you said, you were talking about hazardicity could be of any form. It could be chemical, it could be physical, it could be just by seeing you, I may start sweating. No, you are toxic for me or you are hazardous for me? Hazardous. So, basically toxicity is a very extreme limit of something. Now, if I lower down the concentration by adding something to it and if I lower down the toxicity, it comes to the level of hazardicity. You got the point? So, toxicity is extreme. Hazardicity can be controlled easily as some of them said and of less effects it is controllable. So, when you say you know most of the drinks which you take normally are always diluted, why? You take neat, what is going to happen? It is toxic, they, they write on the medicines you know doses should not be more than this. Toxicity is this, hazardicity is even if you take two doses nothing is going to happen, third dose fine, fourth you should not take, then you are heading towards toxicity. So, in short, have you understood this Panda? Whenever I am trying to dispose something in the environment, the first question is what is toxic, what is hazardous? Somebody has to define this, there has to be a rule of the land. So, then we have created these watchdogs of the environment. You must be knowing CPCB, Central Pollution Control Board, we have MOEFCC, Ministry of environment and forest and climate change, beautiful. So, this happened recently, before that it was only MOEF, fine. At the atomic level, who is monitoring all this? Iraq was given a warning, by whom? Huh? By UN, yes, why? Before bombardment, before giving XX grade, instructor is supposed to warn you. No, is this correct or not? So, that means the warning has to be served first. International atomic agencies are there, IAEA. Now, these are the Bibles, you cannot say anything to them. So, they come and they say, well, we want to see your setups, what you are doing here, how are you managing your waste, where are you dumping it, shorts. And if you do not disclose, what is the punishment? Huh? Number one sanctions, if you do not follow sanctions, then number three, higher stages towards toxicity now, bombard the entire land. The rule has been passed because you are doing something which is not good for the humanity, clear? And then we have to take this action. So, everything is linked together, you know, with this figure or what I am trying to show you here. Now, in simple fossil form, suppose if I say, as I think you are discussing, you are going to install industry and industries are going to generate waste material, clear? Yeah? It could be liquid, it could be solid, it could be gaseous and you are going to dump it somewhere definitely. Now, once you dump it over here, what is going to happen? some part of this activity, it could be chemical, it could be radiological, it could be biological, depends from where it is coming. So, from a operation theatre of a hospital, where the cancerous cells are being dissected, 
and they throw it clear and if this waste I dump over somewhere on the road in the free land in the water body what is going to happen this is a source of biological activity clear from industries pharmaceutical companies whatever is being disposed is having lot of chemical concentration of different heavy elements iron mercury strontium cadmium zinc tin cobalt barium what not go to the atomic power station or a facility where atomic studies are being done research institutions where you are using handling isotopes one of the students used to throw everything in the sink here then one day I caught him I said where are you throwing all these things do you have any idea he says I never realized what I am doing so then institute created a policy of handling toxic and radioactive waste because many of us are involved in the radioactive waste analysis several of us nuclear sciences people are doing mechanical engineering people are doing I am doing metallurgists are doing chemical engineers are doing physicists are doing biologists are doing and so on every lab has this type of something clear so the question is if you are dumping something which might be having either chemical attributes biological attributes microbiological attributes attributes it could be at very high temperature even when effluents come out of the industries they are not going to be at normal temperature they are going to be at very high temperature you got the point so i am talking about toxicity and hazardicity associated with chemical attributes radiological attributes thermal attributes microbiological attributes is this part clear so when you are dumping anything anywhere please remember that these four attributes are associated with the waste material is this part clear now this is another issue whether they are within the specified limits of tolerance or acceptance or not chances are that they may exceed the limits of these prescribed rules so when i say concentration which is permissible should be much more sorry much less than this 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 value clear i have set a toxicity parameter anything which is more than this value which is permitted or acceptable by the organizations which are the watchdog of environment clear becomes toxic or hazardous as long as it remains less than this it is acceptable so that's the reason people used to mix everything in water and throw it is water available so much nowadays there are many places where we don't have water to drink even forget about the construction forget about dilute and discharge this was the concept which was normally used by people any waste which comes out of industry i will add gallons of water make a very very less concentration slurry and dispose it anywhere those days are over because now there is lot of awareness everybody is educated clear it has become a fashion to blackmail sometimes industries in the name of environment so there is one group which is very active in this direction clear so whenever industry gets a threat chalo iit let us contact some professor who will study the whole thing he will charge some good fees and he will show on paper everything is all right you need not worry this type of tamasha is happening everywhere unfortunately there are not many people who can handle this and the problems are becoming of you know entirely unexplorable magnitude maharashtra is the place where more than 330 lands are lying contaminated heavily now from here the entire economics politics sociology everything starts and if this land happens to be contaminated can you afford this to remain contaminated ever as somebody said the moment i am dumping here i am contaminating the soil somebody said i think you said you were talking about contamination is it not i forgot your name sorry 
Rahul, so you were talking about degradation of the material. So the moment I dump waste, the material has got degraded. Clear? I do not know how to quantify this degradation. And this degradation could be of several types. It could be mechanical degradation, it could be chemical degradation, it could be nuclear degradation, it could be thermal degradation and so on. Fine? Suppose if I am having organic soil over here, suppose if this happens to be marine clay. Marine clays are famous for organic content. Fine? So the moment this organic matter comes in contact with something which is at elevated temperature, what will happen? All the organic matter will be eaten up by the heat. In other words, the material decomposition occurs. If the chemical intensities are very, very high, what is going to happen? All this organic matter is going to get eaten up by the chemicals. You got the point? If the radiological activities are very, very high or the concentrations are very high, all this organic matter will get eaten up by the radiological thing. And if microbial activity is very high, everything will get eaten up by the microbes. Is this point clear? What we are doing then? We are trying to deal with these type of situations. Clear? And as a technologist, our idea is to create safe limits of disposals. And where? And how deep? And in what type of formations? Look at this. If I am dumping highly toxic hazardous material. Now it goes, interacts with this soil mass which is above the water table. This is what is known as dry soil mass. It could be partially saturated also. You have not studied partial saturated state of the material right now. You have studied the soil mechanics which deals with only saturated state of the material. That means you are, most of your experiments if you remember were done by soaking the sample in water for certain hours. Be it consolidation, be it hydraulic conductivity, be it tractional testing, be it direct shear testing. You agree? Even hydrometer analysis also, you allowed interaction with water. It may not be the case in countries like India, where water is a commodity. How many villages are getting water? It is a big issue. So, what I am trying to prove is that water is not a solution that you make a slurry and you know reduce the concentration and dump the waste anywhere. Is this part clear? Are you understanding the issues? So many times I tell you, no, this is the issue. Water is not there. How to dilute the waste? Practical problem. How would you get the solutions to these issue problems? So let us start again. So I am dumping something here. It interacts with the soil, reaches the water table and as somebody rightly said, some part of this activity goes and becomes a part of the water in the well. So the moment you draw water for drinking, sustenance, all this activity comes out. Have you ever heard in newspapers and the TV news channels, they show, you know, villages, sometimes there is a fire in the well and sometimes, you know, they go and take out water and rather than water, petroleum comes out of the well. Sometimes some chemicals come out of the well. Why? There must be a mine. There must be some connection with the mine base to this place where the well has been dug. It is a hydrodynamics of the system. So what happens is all this activity comes, becomes a part of the system which you are consuming. Water got contaminated. Now this is what I have shown is as an aquifer. You know what is aquifer? Where the water is stored. Mostly these are rocks of very high porosities. You know how to determine porosity? You must have done this experiment, take a rock, soak it in water, wait before doing this, come after 3, 4 days and again weigh the rock, weight absorbed, water absorbed, you know, divided by the weight, dry weight of the water is the porosity. So you require very high porous rocks, let us say chalk is a very good porous material. Porosity would be 30 percent, 40 percent. It can absorb water. This is the aquifer. Clear? So, what hint you get from this figure? If I am exposing my aquifers to get contaminated, what is going to happen? 
if you are having some activity from where the waste is dumped and this waste finds a pathway to reach up to the aquifers, what is going to happen? Your entire water will get contaminated. So, what is your role as a geotechnologist? Contain this, let it not happen. Isolate this whole area so that nothing percolates through it. You must have done sheet pile design and coffer dams and underground, you know, impermeation, what do you call it, curtains and so on. Why you have done all these things? Because you have to design a cutoff, create a trench, let there be a curtain so that nothing percolates inside and your groundwater remains unaffected. Clear? I have shown this fracture. Fractured means this is a porous system of very high porosity and in hydraulics course you must have studied there is something known as yield of the aquifer. You remember you are pumping out, pumping in tests where you are forcing water to go in and then sometimes you take out water by using the Pecker's test. So, you are trying to find out what is the discharge of the wells, is it not? So, now this is getting contaminated. What I have also shown here is which nobody has observed. Anyone who has observed something apart from this? There are few black arrows. What are these arrows? This shows the water table and the movement of the water table. Water table always remains either in a stagnant form or it moves. Clear? Aquifers are the ones where water gets stored in a porous media. So, these are the systems designed by the nature in which water is gets stored because they are highly porous. Aqua is water, first is something where you know system goes and sits. Effect on the bedrock, okay bedrock I mean bedrock I missed up. Yes, so this becomes another issue because of the excessive water you know utilization the water table depletes which is the condition in most of the cities and towns and villages of the country. There is no water, rains are affecting because of climate change, vegetation is getting destroyed. Good for us, imagine if this water table was somewhere here and if you are dumping something, what would have happened? Tree would have started uptaking the contaminant, clear? And then what will happen? This becomes a part of the food chain. All your arsenic, mercury, lead, strontium, zinc, zirconium, what not, this becomes a pathway. Look at this, you are dumping somewhere, it goes to the water table and plants are sucking them. So, this becomes a part of the food chain because vegetarians are going to use these fruits and vegetables to survive. And you know the toxicity level from hazardicity is going to increase to toxicity one day, clear? Even those who are non vegetarians, no good news. Why? Most of the aquaculture guys know what your innate animals are going to breathe or be a part of. So, all these arsenic and things are getting embedded in their flesh. Later on, when you get a time to get research, you will realize that these are the chemicals for which sorption capacity is very, very high. So, even if you do not touch them and you are very close to them, the chances are your fingers and through the fingers and the skin, some of the heavy metals may migrate into your blood veins, clear? And that is why they may become toxic. So, this part is clear. That means, the moment roots uptake water, which is contaminant, is going to be much more hazardous. So, many a times geotechnologists have to do what? They have to maintain the water table. Come what may, we will not allow water table to rise above this design methods, pumping out this. I will create several wells in order to protect a certain village and I will protect, I will, I will take out the water so that the plants never come in contact with this contaminated water. In the previous lecture, we were talking about Venice, there I will like to do different thing. I will like to push water inside through the wells 
so that the entire city comes up like a jack of a car have you seen a jack of a car so if you want to change the tires the step knees what do you do you put a jack and then lift the car up so this is how the entire venice has to be lifted by pumping in water into it this only geotechnologists can do no one else you are realizing this look at the magnitude of the problem it's not lifting one or two cars is the lifting up of the entire city entire establishment in a very controlled manner so that differential settlements don't occur these are the techniques which people are trying to work on these days so your question is preserved still for the bedrock thing we will come to that your point is okay anything else which you think has been missed out here so the role of water table you know one part i have told you this is stagnant water table so we will be dumping more and more of this type what are the consequences we have heard now the question is how to come out of this situation is this correct because situation is really alarming now can we do some engineering can we do some technology can we give a solution to the governance so that this type of situation does not occur this block simulation was done engineered very good so conceptually you are all right now the question is how are you going to execute in the field so, is this correct so your, your concept is perfect now the question is how are you going to execute in the field fine now that becomes a technology demonstration so that part we will do slowly and slowly yes sir how would you maintain this type of a gradient of the water table in real life you know how much energy is required to pump do you have so much of electricity in india do you have so much of petroleum in india it's not possible how would you maintain water tables at a differential level it's a herculean task so whenever you do tunnels underground and whenever you must have seen water being pumping pumped out it's a very expensive project so see we have talked about a problem and now we are trying to discuss about what should be the solution for this clear so what technologies do they first create a problem and then they try to analyze the problem to get a solution for this now this is what most of the geotechnical uh, engineers who have got converted into environmental geotechnologists are doing and i am sure you will notice that these type of problems are becoming so regular that everybody is so busy nobody has time it's a great learning experience 